Okay, so I decided to buy a power over ethernet switch because I've had some power over ethernet products before and never been able to test them out properly. Uh, this was £26.99 from Amazon. It was the cheapest one they had. Uh, and so it's a four port, so you can plug one ethernet into here and then you can plug in four devices which can be powered, but also you can use it with just any ordinary ethernet connection. Uh, if it's a non-power over ethernet product, it still works, it just doesn't power it. So it doesn't come with any cables, it just comes with this power adapter, which is a hefty 53.5 volt, 0.81 amp. So here we have on the back a Kensington lock, so you can lock it in place for security reasons. Let's just plug it in. And you can see it comes on straight away. Now this Pi KVM comes with a power over ethernet socket, so that would work with it, but I haven't had the updated software yet, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to try plugging in this Mechatronics Pro. So this is the R58X, which I've had for a while and I've done a few videos on, um, but this pretty much comes with everything you could think of on a single board computer. So you can see power over ethernet here, display port adapters, HDMI in and out, antennas, a couple of USBs, three more USBs in the front, USB-C, just loads of things and something I really like, the analog dial. But let's plug it in show you what happens. So if I plug an HDMI cable into it, so we can see it on the monitor and a mouse keyboard. Then if we plug into any of these sockets and then plug into the back where it says power over ethernet, it should come on pretty much straight away. Yeah, the light is green and you can see it's booting up on my monitor. So let's just log in to show that that's working fine. And you can see it's still running Reborn OS from one of my previous videos. So that's great. That's all up and running. What else can we plug in? So the Computer Module 4 has loads of different boards. And as I said before, the PiCast uh, KVM one is one. But that's the only one I've got that's power over Ethernet. But the Raspberry Pi 4 has power over Ethernet here. And that's enabled by using a board. So this is the Raspberry Pi PoE Plus hat. And it basically converts that Ethernet socket to power over Ethernet, but it also gives you a PWM, so a temperature controlled fan, which is really cool. And it literally just slots on. So it, if you line up the GPIO pins, it's got the little bit here that connects to those pins I just showed you, and obviously the normal GPIO pins. So let's line that up and just push it together. And you do have four screws to put in the bottom just to keep it in place, but I'm not going to bother with that. So let's grab another cable and plug it in. Pop an SD card in. And just plug that in. And you can see, as soon as you plug it in, the light comes on and it's starting to boot up. So let's grab the HDMI out of this one move this out of the way a little bit and pop it into my Pi 4. So this was the OS that I was recently using with YOLO Cam. You can still use the camera with it because the camera connection is still accessible underneath it. And that's actually a very good use for it, using it for some sort of security camera. So I've been playing around with it for a while and uh, the Mechatronics is working absolutely fine. And uh, I've got my Raspberry Pi running KDE Plasma from an SSD drive and that's working fine as well. But I have noticed the fan is a little bit whiny. Uh, it's a bit more aggressive than I want it to be. Uh, when it gets to around about 45 degrees or so, it tends to speed up a bit. And it's certainly noisier than the 52 Pi fan that I've got on this Pi, uh, which actually I didn't realize that one was switched on, uh, but it is switched on, but this is pretty much silent, but it's quite a bit bigger. So I had a look through the settings and it seems that the, the fan is actually controlled by the operating system. So my KDE Plasma build is based on Raspberry Pi OS and it just controls it. It has automatic settings. But when I did a search, I found Jeff Geerling has done a blog on it. And there are some settings in here that Nublet69 suggested on GitHub. And uh, if we copy this, so the top bit is just a title with, when it's a hash. Uh, it means that it's going to ignore that line. But let's pop that into the config.txt. So sudo nano boot config.txt. And let's just pop it right at the bottom. Ah, look, I've got the original fan controls. Well, that's for the other one that I used, the uh, 52 Pi one. 
So if I go up to that and just hash that out because I don't want it to make any difference to it. So these are the new settings. Uh, so let's control X and Y and enter and then reboot to apply those settings. The fan speeds up as you turn it off because it's not being controlled then. Okay, that's way better now. I can't hear it at all. Um, I'm not, I can see that it's running, but I can't hear it. So P sensor and let's monitor the temperature and see what happens. So what we at 56 at the moment. So normally it would definitely have been running faster and wasn't very pleasant. Uh, the maximum temperature has been is 56, but I haven't really run anything on this yet. So let's play a video and see if we can get that to speed up and just see how well it performs. Okay, I can hear it sped up already. I don't know if you can hear it on my microphone. It's not loud, it's not as loud as it was before, but uh, it's definitely, I'm conscious of it now. So let's click on that. So this will start playing video, which will mean that the temperature will go up quite quickly. So you can see it's 62 at the moment. And if I stop playing the video, let's see how quickly that gets to temperature. Oh yeah, it's gone off already. So around about 57. Yeah, definitely much better settings. I might even be tempted to go even more aggressive. There are more settings in that blog, so I'll put a link in the description to it, uh, Jeff Gidding's blog, and uh, there's a bit of a thread there of people going through for different operating systems and things like that if you're interested. So I'm definitely impressed with Power Over Ethernet, and uh, I really like this adapter to be able to convert a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Pi 3B to be able to use it. I like the fact the fan is built in and definitely the fact that I've now slowed it down so it's much more functional for me. Uh, I was really impressed that the Mechatronics had that functionality built in and uh, I've just looked up the specs for how far you can go with power over Ethernet, 328 feet or 100 meters and the specs in my TP-Link instruction book say the same as that. So uh, it really means for things like cameras or monitoring equipment, it's really handy. But wouldn't it be great if all laptops had power over Ethernet so you could go pretty much anywhere rather than worry about what power adapter you're using. You could just plug in an Ethernet cable and then you've got a network connection and also you've got power. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.